Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the press conference of Tommy Paul. First of all, congratulations, Tommy. Clean in for you today. How would you rate your performance here in the Uh, I would give it like out of 10. Like an eight and a half probably today. I thought I played pretty well. And in tennis, I think eight and a half is pretty good. No one ever plays at a 10 out of 10. Um, I usually play pretty well here in Indian Wells, so definitely excited to be back. Tom, congrats on the win. Thanks. It's been a process for you the last couple of years, and you clearly turned a corner this year with the Aussie Open semifinal, top 20, right? I wonder if you look at it and could pinpoint it to maybe one, two, three things that really helped you made the difference and helped you turn the corner. Could you, could you name a few things off? gone through? I don't know, because it, it hasn't really been like a, like to the next day, like one day to the next, it's like a full turnaround. It's kind of been more of like every day, it's gotten a little bit, a little bit better, a little bit better. If you look at my ranking over the past four years, every, every year it's just moved up a bit, moved up a bit, moved up a bit. So uh, I think it's been slow and steady um, on the rise, and I think every year I've gotten better. I've fixed a couple of things that uh, I didn't like in my game and made a couple things better. Uh, I think playing a lot more big matches last year. I played, I don't know, like 10 quarterfinal matches last year, and a few of them were Masters 1000. So, I mean, those are big matches, and I didn't get through those last year, but just having that experience really helps going into this year. And I hope. Uh, Playing the big matches that I'm playing this year will help going into next year. Uh, can I ask you about post Australia? You played a bunch. How? What was the process of like sort of putting? Well, not putting Australia behind you. It's a pretty good experience, but sort of moving on from the end of it, getting the perspective uh, from it, and yeah. going on to the next match, the next tournament. Well, there's no easier way to forget about a good result in Australia than going straight to Uzbekistan to play Davis Cup. Uh, that was a, a, a quick turnaround. And I like, I mean, I told the captain and the team that I was going to play. So, I mean, it didn't didn't matter what result I had in Australia. I was going to go, going to go play. And I, I mean, I love Davis Cup. I want to, I said to everyone, like, I want to win that event so bad. So, uh, to answer your question, just playing playing that and then playing a home event in Del Rey, I wasn't really feeling well that week and didn't play my best tennis. Uh, so I got humbled pretty quickly there and then went straight to Acapulco and played well. It's just week after week, you know, you have good weeks and have bad weeks. Tennis is all about short-term memory loss, you know. You need to be able to forget and move on and and take confidence and move on. I was thinking about wanting to remember. I'm curious, short-term memory loss by about the end of it, but you know, made your first semifinal and things like that. Did you feel different going on to the court in the next tournaments in terms of expectations or no? I mean, I don't. Your I, Grand I, Slam semifinalist. Obviously? Yeah, I, I don't try and like. I don't want my head to like get big. You know, I try and like uh, not get too confident. I think overconfidence is, is almost worse than no confidence. Um, I've, told, I've been told that since a young age. So, uh, you know, it's, it's important to have that happy medium of being confident when you need to be confident and being humble when you need to be humble. So I think, obviously, I'm pretty happy with the way I played in Australia and the result. But I mean, I looked at it like, all right, like my last match in Australia, I got absolutely pummeled, and I was not happy about that that match. And I left Australia ultimately thinking, like, all right, what do I need to do to win that match next time or play better in that match? And I think that's probably the best way to move forward from any result, really. Piggybacking off that, did you come to any conclusion saying Novak's a beast? It's, it's crazy challenge, but did, did, have you talked it out? And are there things you realize that, hey, I need to do this, this, and this to get to that crazy level? 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty crazy level, definitely. But I think he, he just handles every situation, every moment in massive matches so well. And, I mean, if I want to be where I want to be, like, I think, or I know that's something that I'm going to have to get a lot better at and something I'm working on big time. I think mentally he's the best in the game, and uh, that's where you see the difference in, in those matches, at least. I think that's where most of the difference was in that match. Um, and, like, you, you say, like, oh, like, the only difference was mentality or, like, his mental game was better, but, like, that's big, you know? Like, it was, like, seven five six one six one or something, and... It was all mental, I think. Has there been an effort with you in the last couple of years to go maybe more from a counter-punching style of play that maybe relies on wheels a bit to getting up to where you have a, more of a balance of attack in your game? Definitely. I think every, every player at the top of the game has a weapon, and I want my weapon to be being like super dangerous at the net and trying to attack as much as I can. Does net play and moving forward come into that? And where would you say you are in terms of that type of play? What do you mean? Just like is getting to net a part of that attacking style that you seek? Absolutely, yeah. My my coach couldn't be more vocal about the fact that he wants me to come to the net way more. Like I said it in my on court interview after. Um, I could come in 40 times, and he would tell me, like, why didn't you come in on this point, you know? Like, why didn't you come in on this point? There, there's always, uh, he sees opportunities to come in a lot better than I do right now, and I think his whole idea is to try and get me to be able to see every opportunity in a match to come to the net. I think last year I, I played, or two years ago, I played Rublev here at night, and it was so slow, and the only way to win points was either the other guy had to miss, and Rublev's pretty good, he's not missing that much, or get to the net and finish the point there. And I think I came in like 30 or 40 times in that match, and he like always goes back to that match to try and use it as an example. Just one more question about the, that difference between overconfidence and, and confidence. Where, where do you find that balance? Um, or is there, are there any? It's different for everyone. Yeah. Like every, every you know, single person. Other things you do in order to get yourself ready, you know, now that you have accomplished some big, some big things uh, in terms of dealing with expectations for um, yourself and those that others put on you. I don't know. Like, I don't, I try and like, like I don't play for anybody else. So no one else's expectations are ever going to like affect me, I don't think. I mean, at least I, I don't plan on having them affect me or I don't see them affecting me. Uh, but obviously, like, at some point, you put pressure on yourself to, to play well. But I don't know. I think that's where practice comes in and also confidence of your last matches. Like, that's where you need the, the little bit of confidence that you're getting from winning matches. Last one is, I know we ask you guys a lot about the culture of American men's tennis. Top 10 guys in the top 50. But I wonder specifically if you could give some thoughts on Taylor and what he's meant to maybe dog and the composure and the maturity and the mental toughness he's shown by being top five right now. Yeah, I mean, he's had a unbelievable past year. I mean, even more, really. He's been the most consistent of the Americans and had the best results of the Americans. So. That's why he is where he is. That's why he's number one American, and that's why he's top five. Um, yeah, he's he's uh, playing him is it's not always fun, you know. It's constant pressure. He's got a great serve. He's he's improved so much to me. Like I think the thing that he's improved the most is probably his movement. Like he he has good defense now. I think when he first came on tour, he always had the offense, but the defense maybe lacked a little bit. But now he's moving better and. He's getting out of the corners better, and he's uh, super dangerous to any single player in the world. Um, but I mean, obviously, you know, like me, Francis, uh, Sebi, like 
all, I mean, all the Americans, we want to be where he's at, and we want to take that spot from him. You know, that's that's what we want. That's where we want to be. And he just jumped up there. Did he? Yeah. Just as he was speaking. 6'4". Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you.